What's up guys, Coach Joe here at Elite FTS. I'm here with Father Dave today because we're in our rocking chairs. And grandpa. grandpa. Gra You're a grandpa? Are you <laughs> no, uh, no. Grandfather Dave. No, no, no. <laughs> he just called himself old. No, I, didn't, I, I didn't say it. But anyway, uh, with age comes wisdom. All right, so I wanted to just do a, a quick Q&A of basically any wisdom you can bestow upon beginner to intermediate lifters who are getting into training uh, common mistakes that you see them making. Uh, and this could be just a couple quick ones, it could be one big one, whatever, but he's been in the game for a long time, okay? You can learn a lot from this man. And the viewers that we have on this channel are people who are just getting involved with their lifting journey or they're kind of uh, in, the, in the intermediate phase. And I think there's a, a lot of things we can learn uh, from the past to you know, just be more efficient, be more productive, uh, make more progress. Uh, and I'd say you're not gonna make mistakes because you are. But I think, you know, Dave can kind of hit on some, some big key points on things for you guys to think about and consider. So mistakes for beginner, intermediate. So they've already gone through the, you know, first year. It's like all the newbie gains. Yeah, yeah, I would say the newbie gains are done now. Okay. Um, I used to make fun of people that would say consistency because I just always took it for granted that anybody that was serious about training would be consistent. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. You know, it's not the case at all. And by consistency, I'm not speaking that, you know, if, if say you're on a program that's four days per week and life happens and you can only get two in, that's still to me consistent. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you know, training for two or three weeks and then just not training at all. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's one degree of inconsistency, which is gonna lead you nowhere really, really fast. The other degree of inconsistency is exactly what I was talking about. So they're, they're there two days one week, four days the next day, two days the next week. What happens there is we need to define where you're training mm -hmm. and what the environment is and who you're training with. If you're training by yourself, yes, you can get away with that and don't get too caught up in how you have to keep adjusting the program, right? Gotcha. You can do two total body days and then you split a different split the next week and keep progressing forward on that but where and this is going to lead into a second tip here is try to find people that you can train with or around that are better than you mm -hmm. and i like to have you know groups of people that are going to be better at the same level and and not as good and from from a strength perspective i'm not judging people on you know anything like that but the strength perspective because if you got people that are better you have something to aspire to and people to fix those little errors flaws and so forth at the same level you become competitive mm -hmm. even if you try not to be and then if there's somebody that's a little under where you're at you can teach them with mm -hmm. re which reinforces those other two mm -hmm. live learn pass on kind of plays into sure. that whole thing and um but with the the problem they run into there is they might be in the right environment they might be in a place where they're they're around people that will help them that only lasts as long as they're committed to actually being there, mm -hmm. right? So if, <laughs> say when I was at Westside, which was the epitome of that, you know, somebody misses with four training days per week, somebody misses one day one week, one day the next week, they're just gone. You know, they're just gonna be thrown mm -hmm. out, right? Because what value are they bringing there? Because the only thing that they're doing is they're bringing in, um, they're, <laughs> they can degrade what we have mm -hmm. right because then the next person is going to think that's okay then the next person thinks that's okay and then you we would end up with just two people mm -hmm. and then say it's a max effort day you don't have spotters and everything mm -hmm. else but that's the the highest level of training partner group type of thing yeah the other thing may be just a group of three or four people that are training at the same time or a training partner say for instance one of these guys lands this great training partner mm -hmm. willing to help them out they're going to help you out all Actually, they're going to help you out sparingly <laughs> from the very beginning because more than likely they're not charging in there. They're just kind of giving tips. Mm -hmm. They're just helping, but they're, they don't want to waste their time on somebody that's not going to use what they're saying either. Now, if that person is consistent all the time, if it's four days per week, whoever that person is is going to help them more and more and more and more because they're going to begin to they're going to see themselves mm -hmm. when they are younger in yeah. them. Now they start you know, two days here, four days here, one day here, one day here, one day here. That person that could have really helped them propel at best is gonna be a spotter. Mm -hmm. And you know damn well, cause you probably do it. I know I do it. You'll see issues. 
but I'm not going to bring them up, mm -hmm. you know, because what's the point? I'm going to spend more time with the people that are showing up on that more regular basis mm -hmm. because A, they've earned it, and then B, they're going to use it, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, again, it degrades, you know, the rest of the people that are in there. So to the beginners that are out there, if you can find yourself in that position to be around those people, then maximize being in that position, mm -hmm. you know, um, and if you don't, you, you're probably going to want to find somewhere else because it's hard to earn that back, you know, when yeah. it comes back in there because it falls. So there's a lot of people out there willing to help people for free, mm -hmm. but it's not really free. Mm -hmm. You know, the price is showing up, being consistent, do it, putting in the work and so forth. Th those are the biggest. And I haven't even talked about training. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Those are by far the biggest because you're going to see that is the most consistent amongst anybody that's been doing this for a long time that's got to and, and, and the intermediate to good mm -hmm. you know to me there's four levels so good to get to the great level it's almost 100 percent necessary mm. you know even if it's a bodybuilder and they're training alone they're still in other gyms where the other people are there that's true. you know so there's that networking so that's where you're going to learn the most if you're still a competitor or you're still in that growth phase the the most practical knowledge you're ever going to learn is within those four walls. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be on a screen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's always within there. So you got to put yourself in those positions for that. I think that's why we're seeing, I don't, I don't want to say mass yet, but we're seeing a big exodus from people from home gyms going back into small gyms like yours mm -hmm. because they're not making progress. Yeah. They're trying to find answers on screens, and you can find a lot of information on screens, no doubt. But it's completely different when it's answers in, in a gym where people mm -hmm. can overlook and see everything. Now, with kind of how I, I like actually where you're going with this, where we didn't even talk about training yet, and I do want you to hit on some training tips. Mm -hmm. um, outside of what you had just mentioned, what was the biggest one for you uh, that was like a game changer, or I'd say like, um, a mistake that maybe you were making outside of training that was the game changer to help you in your success with lifting? Sometimes you need to change your philosophy and turn it completely upside down. So I competed in like 80, 82, 83. So I started competing at 13 years old. And by the time I graduated college, you know, at that point, I don't know how, I was in college for way too long. Um, maybe 90, 89. I power lifted this whole time. And it was always a linear type mm -hmm programming and this is what my degree was in exercise science and my passion was always been training so it wasn't for lack of knowledge you know everything and it, it branched more into more block training but still I mean all training still linear if you mm -hmm. want to break it down but more into a block training type of system where it was still progressive overload over a period of time starting with you know the eights you know mm -hmm. then the fives and threes yep. Yep. and then singles then you peak and then you would rest hypertrophy work repeat kind of just keep doing that and i strongly believed in that so when i when the group of powerlifters i was training with in college i, I still remember somebody bringing me a powerlifting usa bench article that louis simmons wrote and i i was an acquaintance of louis he would help me in the back of warm-up rooms and meets and mm -hmm. stuff like that on the phone here and there but nothing to the extent that it became later. And I'm reading this eight sets of three at like 60, 70%. I'm like, this, this, no, no, this, this is, and back then it was just completely, mm -hmm. I mean, it's foreign to people now back then. It, the dynamic stuff was so foreign. I'm like, this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. This ain't gonna work. Meanwhile, my total's been the same for the last three years <laughs> at that time. And I end up tearing my pack. And at that point in time where I tore my pack, I also graduated. And I highly contemplated I'm done with the sport. And and the only thing that brought me back was, you know, talking to uh, Chuck Vogelpohl and Louie at a meet. And it was shortly before this whole thing happened. And them just drilling in my head that, you know, there's a better way to do this. If you keep doing it the way that you're doing it, you're just gonna, you're gonna get hurt. You're just, you're just gonna, you're gonna run into the ground. You've already pulled too many things. Mm -hmm. Just beating your head against the wall, basically trying to, at that point trying to fit a, a square peg in a round mm -hmm. hole so something's going to shave off you know as you're doing it doing that and so it, i still love the sport and i wasn't ready for that so i came up and had a lunch breakfast with louis at the time it was a bench session and i'm i can't do shit because you know mm -hmm. 
It was completely detached at the time. And he's talking through all this stuff. I'm like, look, I gotta be honest with you. It's just, I, I don't get it, man. I don't, I don't get it. I don't buy it. And so I made the decision that yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to Columbus and I'm gonna do this. Partially because, you know, he was selling me on all of it for one thing. Um, he definitely believed in potential. I didn't know I had, you know, at the time more so than anybody else. So that kind of sold me on it. But during that conversation, I started thinking, if I quit now, but I didn't try this, mm. I'm going to be sitting there thinking to myself, what if I would have done that? Mm -hmm. And that was also the same time moment in time that I said, if I get back into this, when I'm finally done, I'd never want to look back and say, what if? Mm -hmm. Now I butt heads with him for the first six months or a year, because still trying to figure it out until he started giving me some of the Russian manuals to actually see where this was coming from. By no means am I an, an, an intellect or a scientist. <laughs> I'm just a meathead like everybody else. But I still wanted to see it because this is shit I didn't see in Soviet sport reviews and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. But then once, this, oddly enough, once I did see it, then I went back through the Soviet sport reviews and the other stuff I had, I did start to see it. Mm. Sometimes we come, become so focused on trying to validate our own bias that we don't see what's on the other side. Mm -hmm. And when I, so the training philosophy that I believed in wholeheartedly was helping other people with, was helping training crews with, was using with athletes, just got flipped on its head. Right, and then my total went up 250, 300 pounds over the next couple of years. So that that's a huge one, man, yeah. because that that's like taking everything that you believe in and saying, okay, yes, that still works. But it, it took me a while to even get to that base, right? Because when I flipped it and it started, everything started to just take off. Then I'm around all these other people that are way stronger. I'm thinking all that other stuff is just bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like that's just a lie. It's all bullshit. It's worthless. It's nobody should ever do that. It doesn't have its place. It took me a while to realize, you know, there are other paths, mm -hmm. you know, to where it is. But it also broadened my view that if there's other things out there, you know, I, I'm not going to discount it. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to look into it because you, if, if I never would have, I don't know first off where I would be right now. Mm. You know, I, I probably personal trainer somewhere. I mean, I would still be in the industry without a doubt, but not where I am now. And my life would have went a completely different path or I would have kept just being a bouncer. You know, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's crazy. And uh, for whatever it's worth, I feel like I'm kind of in that position uh, that he's in like right now, but like a younger version. Uh, Cause I do believe that there are other ways to do things, but like, that's why I'm here. He's putting me through a conjugate workout. And that's gonna be another video because I'm like a periodization kind of guy, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, uh, I think it's good to talk to you because you can kind of make me see things in a different perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'll be a great video. Um,